the nails and shoes. Domain you have to trim man where you spend pan you. Welcome back to the Now Morning Show as we celebrate International Women's Day in fine style. Before we go into our next conversation with a powerful lady, we have to send out some greetings going out to all the women in Trinidad and Tobago and special women, Dolores Francis of Separia and Anne Peters of Chaguanas and to the lovely ladies on the panel, which is us. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Love and more from Esther Ashby and she tells us all to keep up the good work. Thank you, Esther. Happy International Women's Day Happy to you too, International Esther. Women's Day. So let's get into the conversation as we continue to talk about powerful women, women leading the way in culinary arts. Joining us in studio is no stranger to the Now Morning Show, Natasha Devu, international chef and so much more. Good morning, Natasha. Oh, good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me here. Come back. Yeah. I, like I don't like I'm home, right? Hey, right. yeah. I'm between two Natasha. Uh, it's gonna be a good show. <laughs> but I'm gonna jump into the conversation because I think this is the first time we have interacted on yeah, screen, on screen. camera anyway. And one of the things I always wanted to ask is if you ever had the challenge of telling you that a woman's rightful place is in the kitchen. I mean, you're dominating culinary. Yeah. We see a lot of men in terms yeah. of uh, head chefs and those yeah. sorts. Did you, at any point, get that sort of comeback? Um, not necessarily. I'm not intimidated by weak people. Um, and I'm not intimidated because I think that comment would come from a man. But the thing is, like, are you capable of leading? And if you're capable of leading, of course, I'm able to be in the kitchen. So, yeah. Hello, them again. I just wanted to give, I just yeah. to, like, give a very <laughs> gentle round of applause away from my mic this morning. Excellent. No, because I think we, we, we do have a lot of stereotyping and mm -hmm. a lot of... Generally, in any leadership position, you're going to get challenged. There will always be somebody to challenge you. And how you handle that really is what makes you a leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I am um, um, feminine 100%. I don't, you know, there's this whole big feminist movement, you know, like everybody entitled to what they choose. I don't choose it because I think it's just a, a place that it put women um, in like mental health issues. You just see a lot of the feminist movement, women are depressed, they have depression, they're drinking wine. The thing is like, for me it's like empowering yourself doesn't mean that you need to segregate yourself into one group. Mm -hmm. Being a woman or being a leader means that you, you operate in the function that you were called and you function in that exactly what it is. I'm a chef. You might be a reporter, if it's a model, whatever you are, you could be a mom. But the thing is, is what you were called into, you just operate in that and that makes you a great leader in that place. I couldn't agree with you more. Also, um, honoring your feminine energy is something that is so important and can definitely propel you in leadership as yes. well, which is something that we see with you. So Natasha, let's go a little bit back. Mm -hmm. before you are where you are today. Oh. What guided you on this journey and sent you off to the screen as well? Um, well, I grew up in Sandy Grandi. Big up to Sandy Grandi. I just big up Manzanella High School. Um, you know, good things come from the country. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's like um, making, you know, like they always say, I make international waves. And uh, I grew up in the country. So I grew up um, not in the high class. I grew up very... I would say more like poor, but I think it's what brought me to be who I am. Mm -hmm. I have always been a person who wanted more. I have always been a dreamer. And for a lot of people around me would still say that my dreams are always surpassed my expectation. Mm -hmm. And that's the place that I always want to live in. If it is I have to become in a place of mediocrity, then I don't want to live. And um, yeah, grew up in Santa Grande, uh, went to school in Manzanilla High School, got married at 18. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't know, divorce at 23. Um, I'm very happy for that marriage that I have because it taught me pivotal lessons that I needed to learn in life. Um, went back to school at 23 from having just four subjects. And from there, um, somebody took a very important part in my life. That is part of the Book of Trinidad Christian Center, and he sent me back to school. And from the education today, I have two bachelor degrees, one in international business and one in uh, culinary arts. And I have like a lot of minor degrees. Um, one allergy, study of wine, mixology, bartending, cakes and toasts and pastries, all coming from uh, Ritz Paris in France. Um, also studied France, uh, French, I lived in France, lived in about 10 different countries, as you see, travel over 70 countries. So, um, yeah, from within that era of my life, I ended up in television because I was in yachting. Belodek saw me, asked me to be part of it. I don't know how I end up on the screen, but after Bill Odeck produced uh, five shows of my own within one year, all on television right now. One just hit the screen 
on Friday in America hey. on Roku TV, 41 million homes about to fly to Canada to work with the Canada Canada Film Company to produce some films to them. So I think it just happened. Never studied anything, um, cinematography, media, anything like that. But I think that's the artistic side of the brain, being a chef. So I'm enjoying the journey. I mean, we enjoy this journey, that's for sure. Right, it continues on Netflix as well. Beyond yeah, that like, is also oh my there. gosh, like... What was that like when the, that news came in, that we hit like, Netflix? Like, I, like... I'm just like, just like this. Like, <laughs> like, I'm always like, okay. But I think, you know how it is, I realized. I didn't even know it was on Netflix. It's like, I was... Obviously, it now hit Trinidad, so a lot of people right. who didn't have mm -hmm. access, uh, NBC or Pika, couldn't see it before, right? And I was where I was in Grenada last two weeks like that, and I was like now going into the water. I'd have like this group of high school university students just start running after me, like screaming, and I'm I'm like frantic, you know, like always like this. <laughs> I'm like. Hi, like they're running after you, and this girl, like she's like literally in tears. And she's like, Oh my god, are you Natasha? And I'm like looking at these people, like, Am I Natasha? Mm, and depends my friend, on who's asking. I, and my <laughs> friend shouted back, Yes, she is, yes, she is. It's like, and sure enough, I started getting the same response, you know, people, everybody's shouting my name. But um, I just think, I just feel proud to represent mm -hmm. my country to be one of the first Caribbean women mm -hmm. to be on Netflix, you know, mm -hmm. whatever category it's in. I'm just proud, and I continue to get my own stuff on television as well. Good Definitely. Stuff. And speaking about pride, of course, tell us a little bit about founding of your association. Oh, that's my baby. So for me, um, believe it or not, I love my country. I really am I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be like, I think people won't understand. I am proud to be a caramel macchiato girl. Like <laughs> I am proud, like, you know, like, because growing up, we were taught differently that, you know, if it is you were colored, you know, you were less than until I started traveling. And I see people are paying to get my color. People mm. are paying to get my hair. People are paying practically to be us. So for me as a woman, I was proud to be a, a colored girl, you know? Mm -hmm. So firstly, I'm proud to be that. And uh, secondly, it's just like, yeah, I do what I do. And uh, representing Trinidad, starting the Culinary Association of Trinidad and Tobago was a big thing for me. But I knew I wanted to be an advocate for change. And I would continue to be an advocate for change. I continue saying that I was born to be a disruptor. So I would question every no that come to me from every organization, be it government or not. I would, my failure is a fuel to success. And anybody who think that they can hold me down, they cannot hold me down. They cannot hold back my association. And the thing is, looking at Bob Marley, I was the show Bob Marley. Right. I was just like inspired. I was like, bro, I was like, me? <laughs> this is like, I'm off. Like, this is you. This is me. And I was like, this is me. I identify as Bob Marley, you know? Like, I identify because, you know, the thing is, a prophet is never recognized in his own home, mm -hmm. you know? When it is you become rich and famous, I don't know how much more famous I have to be. I, I hit Netflix, I hit American TV, but I'm still like, I just, but I'm leaving. I'm mm. leaving in, in yeah. um, April. I'm opening a restaurant in Annapolis mm -hmm. called Rum House. Um, I'll continue to run the association. I'm not the only person in the association. Of course. I have some of the pioneers who are standing with me, are still trying to fight. I have the young ones. I'm willing to, to help the young ones. I want the younger generation to become better than me. Mm -hmm. I want them to surpass me because when it is you represent me, when we talk about DNA, this is a DNA of our culture and it's represented worldwide. I couldn't agree with you more there, that is for sure. And we yeah. are represented worldwide and hats off to you for continuing to fly the flag of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. I can only imagine how challenging the decision may have been to it's time to up and move on. Yes. Um, crossing the water is never easy, but yes. I know, of course, that you are going to be back at some point in time, right? Um, well, we would see. But the thing is, as I said, mm -hmm. the association, a great leader, mm -hmm. is what it is you can raise people to lead. So this I don't true. necessarily need to be here mm -hmm. all the time. Decisions could be made. We are in a world of technology now. So for me, it's going out there and getting the resources to run what we have efficiently and effectively. And as I say, raising up another generation who will become greater than I am. Okay. So, Natasha, what I'm hearing is, yes, the wearing of many hats, but a deep sense of self-appreciation and a deep sense of pride. And you talk about the humble beginnings that you came from, but there's somebody looking on right now who is on that journey, who yeah. knows they have the potential, who hopes to accomplish great things, but they're just not quite there yet. Yeah. What do you say to them? Um, there is a twofold to that. 
one like not give up at all like fight for what it is you have for me i just like i just stole somebody's like when since i was in switzerland they tell me oh you have a Trinidadian passport you can't work at one of the best restaurants i stayed up for three days and i sent out 100 emails to the 100 best restaurant in the world it's how bad do you want it mm -hmm. how bad are you going to fight for it but mm -hmm. in that same with that same breath i would say we need to find people who have it all together to invest believe i say that to you on all my pauses risen my dad saw that in me I didn't have an education. I came from a broken home. I came from a broken marriage. But the thing is, when you find people to believe in you, one person to believe in you, you can soar, you would become a phoenix, you would break down walls and territories. That's why I'm a disruptor. This is why when anybody tell me, no, I'm not intimidated. Mm -hmm. So we're pushing forward and we yeah. just need that one person. One corner. person to believe. Okay. I like the, that formula. I'm just taking notes this morning because International <laughs> Women's Day is about recognizing how far we've come yes. and, of course, identifying what we have to do. Yes. So we know the big business is coming up, the restaurant that is, is coming yes. up internationally. And the plans to come home a little sketchy. Yeah. But even further field, will we see you coming back home to have a restaurant here? Is that um, something in the plans I at all? I'm not, not, I, sorry, I am not the person into the restaurant. I love cooking, but I believe in an education. I'm fighting to have an education system established in Toronto and Tobago if our education system is not rebuilt or not functioning in the capacity the way it's supposed to function. Specifically for uh, culinary We will arts, continue right? to complaining. We will continue to complain in Trinidad mm -hmm. because if it is we don't have trained people, we don't have trained chefs, then we don't have trained front of the house service, we'll continue to get crappy food. Mm -hmm. If it is you don't know how to make an egg, you will not never know how to make an egg. If you don't know how to have customer service, you will never be able to have customers. It's something that's taught. It's a lifestyle that you have to be bred and grown into and groomed into. So the mm -hmm. only thing I would come back here to do is change and have an education system where it is we have a generation of leaders and the only thing I would live by is not having a restaurant but leaving a legacy. Excellent and powerful way to close, Natasha. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you so much for being here this morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you beautiful ladies. Happy Love International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. <laughs> We hope to see you soon again. It's a pleasure. And see you continue to. Make you know, waves. this is like home for me now. You know, <laughs> yes, so it's like <laughs> Natasha Devoog, international chef, and so much more with us in studio this morning as we continue this International Women's Day episode. Stay tuned because after this break, we're going all the way, all the way to Turks and Caicos to speak to another powerful woman. We'll be back in a moment. to simply remind you guys to include women of all facets. We are dynamic, incredible, and vastly capable. So don't play into the stereotypes of what a woman should or shouldn't be. We can be whoever and whatever we want. So support is the name of the game. Celebration is what we are doing and underscoring the hardships, understanding them so that we can defeat them is the name of the game. Happy International Women's Day to all the women in my life. The matriarchs from my grandmothers, my mother, my aunts, my sisters, and even my nieces who inspire me each and every day. Celebrate us. Celebrate yourselves. Happy International Women's Day, everyone.